Two new studies on how people feel about wildlife will kick off next year. This will help authorities manage human-wildlife interactions and keep the environment safe for both people and animals living in close proximity here in Singapore. A survey by the Jane Goodall Institute Singapore will first study how we feel about primates and identify gaps that nature groups can plug. This will lay the groundwork for a more comprehensive study looking at our interactions with all common wildlife in Singapore. Also, authorities will expand a pilot which has proven successful in reducing roadkill, using sensors to spot animals that come close to roads and warning motorists to slow down. Development will begin in the first half of next year at Rifle Range Road, in between Bukit Timah Nature Reserve and the upcoming Rifle Range Nature Park. Living so close to nature is a privilege, but it also comes with important responsibilities. Because it means we'll encounter wildlife more frequently uh, in, in our daily life, and we'll have to learn to manage these interactions well and minimize conflicts. But this doesn't always come naturally for us as city dwellers. Science helps us to better understand wildlife behavior and to design more targeted and effective interventions to protect our wildlife. And for more, we're joined by Dr. Sean Lum from NTU's Asian School of the Environment. Uh, Dr. Lum, let's discuss the macaque study first, at which that one aims to improve the relationship between the monkeys and ourselves. How is that dynamic trending and is it getting better or worse? Hi, Steve. Uh, interesting question. You know, that dynamic is kind of a complex one, and, and you could say that it's actually trending in a few different directions. But generally, the experts in this field feel that there's a greater openness and a desire, willingness to coexist with wildlife. But on the other hand, as housing and other developments begin to approach uh, wild areas, there's going to be more of these interactions. So I think having fewer people being, you know, being threatened or uncomfortable with the macaques would be a really good trend to see. Sean, let's talk about the second study because that one is broader in, in, in some ways and, and it wants to get the sense of, of people's attitudes, our experiences with wildlife. Tell us more about the scope of that and how the results are going to be used. Yes, Don, this is a actually a very interesting study because it, it's really the first attempt to try to um, character, score these human wildlife encounters in a way that can be characterized, even quantified, and ultimately to better understand how we feel about having this nature, this natural heritage in our midst. And I think based on these results, we'll see a fine tuning of infrastructure and landscape design, community engagement, uh, programming, public outreach, um, all, all kinds of activities. So it should be really very useful and enlightening study. I can't wait for the results to come out. And usually it's the animals that are the subject of studies, but why is it important to gauge sort of people's perceptions on this front? You know, Steve, imagine we're, we're creating this city in nature. And even, you know, Dr. Jane Goodall this evening said that the world has a lot to do to catch up with Singapore in terms of encouraging and nurturing nature and wildlife. But the city in nature is only going to work if it really becomes part of our collective identity. And, and we don't want any surprises on this. So, so I think using the results of this survey to, to fine tune the way we uh, encourage people to really be proud of and, and celebrate the city and nature will be, will be really, really useful. And I think um, without such a fine understanding, um, you know, we're just making some guesses as to how we, how we roll this city and nature out. Having more data is certainly, you know, valuable to us. Sean, wildlife has a tough time out there. They encounter lots of traffic and we're rolling out this roadway animal detection system uh, from Upper Thompson to Rifle Range Road. What other tech ideas can we adopt to sort of balance nature and urbanization? So, I, yeah, I think we want to do a number of things, Don, which is, first of all, just monitoring nature to make sure that it's, it's healthy and robust. So in the case of wildlife, for example, where are they? Uh, where are they moving? 
when are they breeding? What are they eating? And so this uses all kinds of really cool technology from, from image analysis to uh, remotely sensed images or LIDAR, for example, to, to capturing sounds, um, understanding slight uh, variations in the microclimate, for example, and then in the, in the back using artificial intelligence to really improve the efficacy of these detection methods. Um, how can we protect wildlife from people and people from wildlife? Uh, how can we protect uh, road users? Um, how can we protect birds and jet planes, for example? So there's all kinds of different and really interesting uh, innovative ways technology is being used for the benefit of people and for wildlife. Sean, all the best on these two studies. Dr. Sean Lam there from NTU's Asian School of the Environment.